Somebody send help. I am far too addicted to the Immersive Portals mod. I just can't stop playing it. And I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, this is just... Oh, it's too much for my little brain. The TARDIS that I recently built as well. Also a little bit too much for my little brain. I don't know if I'm just really easily entertained, but I genuinely think I could do this all day long. There's just something so incredibly satisfying about seamlessly transitioning between the different dimensions and none of the angles adding up and nothing really making any sense. It's fantastic. It's such a simple mod, but it is absolutely fantastic. And today we're going to be taking it to the next level by adding in some redstone. I want to create an impossible base in Minecraft. So if I just load up all of these here, where are the portals in relation to one another? Are they all coming out of the same portal? Okay, so that portal is there. This is very confusing. So I have one portal down at the bottom there. I have two portals up at the top here that are in relatively close promise. So I have one portal down at the bottom there. That's absolutely perfect. And then I have these two which are in relatively close proximity, which is slightly less optimal. Now what I'm really, really hoping is that I can relink nether portals, making use of the same regular coordinate system that we use in standard vanilla Minecraft. So if I break this portal and relight this one, yes. Yes, it has connected up. That is brilliant. Right, this is the last portal that I need to remove and then relink. And now they should be all in the correct locations, but just a tiny bit better organized. Yes, this, this is perfect. So we've got our three different locations all lined up there. But now this is where the fun part comes in because I also want to have a set of portals behind these portals that can only be accessed when you deactivate these front portals. And that's where I needed to ensure that the maths was working correctly because otherwise we'd have portals relinking all over the place and it would be an absolute nightmare. Now if this doesn't work, then the whole video is completely ruined. But it has worked. That has 100% worked. So this portal is now linked up to the portal behind the portal. It's getting very confusing to look at and very confusing to say. And that is the last portal to be connected. So all of these are now connected up independently and I know what directions they come out at. So then we can start building rooms off in these directions that won't intersect with one another. Now the thing is, I intend on having a wall here and a wall here, which means that obviously we're not actually able to access these portals that are behind, because if I try and access them by walking through the portal, of course I just end up in the nether. So we need to come up with some way to deactivate all of these portals, which will then give us access to the portals out the back. Now that sounds like it would be complicated, but actually it shouldn't be too confusing. All we need is two dispensers per portal, one with a flint and steel and one with a bucket of water. The only thing is with the bucket of water, we need to dispense it and then retract it back in, which... I have messed up. My idea on how I was going to do it is entirely and 100% flawed. But thankfully this new strategy that I've come up with sounds like it's going to work well. So this will be the flint and steel and then this is the bucket. But as you can probably tell, I haven't put those things in just yet because I'm kind of scared. Not because I think the redstone isn't going to work. I'm 100% certain that the redstone is going to work. It's more if for some reason these things don't link up properly, then we're going to be in serious trouble and this video isn't going to be possible. So let's hold on to our shorts and give this thing a test. All right, with lever flick number one, nothing should happen. With lever flick number two... Okay, so our portals have been broken and we can now pop into the next sections. But if I flick this lever again... It didn't work. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work? Why? What happened? Is there a reason why it didn't work? It almost works, and then it doesn't. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe if I add just a little bit of a delay to each of these things so that it doesn't all happen at once. Okay, that looks actually promising because that looks like it's actually fired something. Maybe I'm almost overloading the portal generation. Oh, this is not good. Oh, I've, cr <laughs> I've created a thing where I can see myself. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I might've actually made it work. 
I have somehow managed to make it work by changing the repeater timings around. It now seems to be consistent. And it is actually linking up to the correct portals. This is one, this is two, that is three. Everything seems to be working. I don't know what I did to change things, but change things I have. And it's actually fixed it for once. So I now have a system where I have three independent rooms out the back and then I have three independent rooms out the front that can all be accessed making use of a lever. Right, now it's time to actually give uses to each one of these rooms. So arguably one of the most important functions for a Minecraft room is storage. And this is going to be one of the storage system rooms. I think I'm going to have one on this side and also one on this side as well. So you have plenty of storage there. But one thing that I'm finding really interesting about building this is, of course, this right here. This is the room. But then if I look here, this is the roof of that room. So this, this is this. I don't know why that's hurting my head a little bit, but it is. Okay, how is everything looking here? I would say, yeah, it's looking it's looking a tiny bit 2012 Minecraft, but I would say it looks pretty interesting. Let's get a few extra lights involved, a little bit of crafting bench and ender chest action, and I would say this room is now all completed. With that being said, I am now going to take this design and mirror it for this room over here, which is actually all the way up here. <laughs> I don't... Look... Okay, maybe I'm really silly. I know it's been well established at this point that I only have two brain cells, but I, this will never get old for me, this this weirdness. Right, our second storage room is now all completed. Crafting bench goes in the middle, and then we've got an ender chest here as well. Everything is properly mirrored, and everything, everything is looking very cool. Although somehow, I, know, I don't know how I've managed to build this one off-center. I thought about not mentioning it but I feel like I have to mention it. So that has now been corrected. Our two rooms are in place. Now it's time to build up this one. And I'm thinking for this central nether portal here, we should probably go for some form of bedroom. And I think I'm going to stick with a fairly similar block palette for each one of these rooms. So staying within that idea of the stone bricks, the oak logs, the smooth stone and things like that, I actually think this is coming together quite nicely. This is quite a warm little bedroom here. I say little, this thing is absolutely enormous. This is probably one of the biggest bedrooms I've built in ages. I mean, as you can probably tell, I'm kind of struggling with what to actually put in here. I've put the grandest bed in that I could possibly think of constructing. This seemed like a good move. Maybe I could go four poster. Do we go for a four poster bed? Is that how grand this bedroom is? This is the first time I have ever constructed a four poster bed in Minecraft. And let's be real. It probably shows. Uh, it probably shows at this point in time. I'm gonna chuck some of this in here. There's a hole. I would say for my first try, this isn't bad. <laughs> that's not bad at all. So that that's my incredibly grand bedroom. And yeah, this is still, this hurts my brain. Doing this will never not be satisfying to me. That's for sure. Now, before I work on the next set of rooms that we have behind these, I think it's probably worth working on the exterior. That looks so cool. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that this exterior is unlikely to win any awards. I just need to do something to cover up all of the redstone. Oh, it's getting bad. The issue is I can't really have any windows to break it up, so it's going to look a little bit like a wooden block. This build has a serious forehead. Like, this is, this is quite something. It doesn't help that this almost looks like a face as well that's eaten like an incredibly sour lemon. A long period of frustration and confusion later, I finally landed on a build that I'm at least somewhat happy with. I think this looks cool. I think this, this holds the portals quite nicely. It's not a bad looking structure. It's definitely not my favorite looking home, but with that being said, I wouldn't be totally embarrassed of it. And the fact that you go inside and it's considerably larger on the inside than it is on the outside. I mean that, once again, Will never get boring to me. Anyway, we still have three more rooms to work on, so let's stop fanning about and actually get these things constructed. This room is going to be a potion room. I'm gonna be honest, this started out as being one of my least favorite rooms, but now that it's constructed, I actually think I like it the best. I really, really like the way this space has come together. Now that it's become a little bit more functional, it's a tiny bit less cool, but I still like the way that it's all formed up. And now on the opposite side, we've got ourselves a furnace room with well, this is, this is quite a large number of furnaces. And then finally, we've got a little enchanting room that'll allow us to get all the max level enchantments that we need. As well as, of course, doing all of the combining and all of the grinding. Now, I am incredibly curious to see what this looks like on the nether side. So yeah, it looks, it looks a little bit strange. Everything's kind of disjointed and a little bit weird. But then if we pop back through into the overworld, you can see everything begins to make sense. So first off, of course, this is the build itself. 
It's not particularly massive. It's it's a decently sized house, but it's not huge. But then on the inside of it, you can see that we have a lot more space. So we've got a bunch of storage. We've got a bedroom that is incredibly fancy and a bunch more storage. And then if we need access to the other elements, then we've got a potion brewing room. We've got a little enchanting setup and we have a bunch of furnaces, all of which accessible with the flick of a lever. And all of it is impossible. Not only is the interior of this house bigger than the house itself, but also the interiors are overlapping. And clearly, yeah, we have a lot of interdimensional action going on here. All in all, I'm really happy with what I've managed to come up with here. This has been a lot of fun. I'm probably going to do more stuff with these immersive portals. They're just, they're far too entertaining for me. So expect to see that more on the channel soon. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. Now, as always at the end of each of my videos, I do quite like to do a little behind the scenes kind of talk about the process of recording. Uh, throughout this, I've eaten a whole, maybe 200, potentially 300 gram bag of Cadbury's mini eggs. I feel quite ill. Probably shouldn't have done that. It's a, it's a bad move. Don't do that.